Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back. You look so much bigger than me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good to be with you again. Let's hang out for the next hour or so. Talk about a proper human diet. Nutrition, medicines, medication, health, longevity. All that's fair game. No sex, religion, or politics by Nisha's request. <laughs> Unless it's a medical related sex question. And yes, we can talk about poop. How you doing? I'm doing. Doing. Doing, doing. Doing. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's well, see what we got going on. If you here. see Ken D. Barry MD commenting in the chat, that is actually me. Just so you know. Are you signed in as me? I had to. Woohoo! She's a mod. All right. If you see a name that is blue and has a little wrench next to it, guess what? Those are proper human diet mentors, and they can help those of you who are new and have simple questions and who aren't doing super chats. So keep an eye on the blue names with the wrenches in case they are answering you. Murray says, is it possible that eggs from chickens that are fed animal byproducts are healthier because they're eating protein? Eh, maybe, maybe. Uh, chickens are built to eat bugs and worms and grass and weeds and seeds. That's what they're made to eat. But they can also eat meat. We've both seen it happen. Oh, yeah. Don't let there be a snake in the chicken lot. or The, the hens will uh -huh. eat it all. There will not be one scale left. They'll also eat their own eggs mm -hmm. and They'll, other yep, chickens if yep, they're dead. Yep, or sometimes alive. <clears throat> so, yeah, they are omnivores in the truest sense. Uh, I don't know if you could increase the protein content of a chicken or the omega-6 content by feeding them animal products, but it's perfectly fine to feed them animal products. A lot of people don't know that about chickens. They think, oh, they have to eat seeds and corn and pellets, but you can feed them all your leftover meat scraps. They will wear them out. They're definitely healthier chickens that are free range that eat both. They're free to eat bugs and seeds. Those are definitely the healthier option. If you have access to free range chicken eggs, go for it. Absolutely. Thank you very much, RC. Roger, 70 year old male, uh, CD51, for, down for a carnivore diet since May the 1st. Down 45 pounds. They will see 5.3. Huzzah. Total cholesterol 120. HDL 39. Still a little low. LDL 75. That's great. Triggs 135. That's normal. Uh, carotid duplex clear. Uh, usual AHA, BS. Uh, how to get HDL increase. So the way you're going to increase your HDL is to eat more fatty red meat and to lift heavy things, Roger. Uh, these are the two things. Now, some people just genetically will have a lower HDL. I'm one of those people. Uh, but the more red meat you eat and the more heavy things you lift routinely, you can get that HDL up to a much healthier level. Uh, the cardiac cardiologist wanted to order a stress echo. Do I need that? I mean, unless you're having symptoms, probably not, but what's it going to hurt? Let them, let them do it. That way you've got even more information to Rubbing the noses of people who think a plant-based diet is the optimal diet. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Adam. Dawn, uh, boyfriend welds galvanized steel and wants an alternative to milk to remove heavy metals from his body. Do you have any suggestions, please? Mm. So if he fears that he's got a heavy metal buildup in his body, he needs to go see his doctor and get that tested. There's two heavy metal panels your doctor can order to see if he actually has a, a dangerous buildup of heavy metals. If he does, then there are medical treatments for that. I'm not sure how he's using milk to remove heavy metals. That I'll look into that, but I've <laughs> never heard of that as an actual not an FDA approved treatment, but just anybody ever say that before. So let me look into that, but I don't see how that could very interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't see how that could work at all. So I would say if you fear he's been exposed to heavy metals and absorbed them, he needs to go to the doctor. Bodybuilder biscuit butter, body blow biscuit butter, sorry. <laughs> lowered ALT from 90 to 60 in three months after taking NAC, berberine, tutka, and milk thistle. Previous liver ultrasound normal. Gastro ran many labs, all negative. Any idea of what could have been the issue? Keto carnivore for two years. Could have been a hundred different issues, or it could just be that you, you gave uh, carnivore long enough to reverse your fatty liver. We may never know, but in the end, you probably don't really care. You're just happy that your 
ALT and other liver, liver labs are looking great. Thank you, Jeanette, very much. Derek, my father has 11 stents. Dang. Is that a record? I've never heard of 11. That's a lot. And he has gout. I live in Michigan. I'm trying to find a carnivore-friendly doctor. Or is there a way to get a conversation with you? He has the mentality of being old and don't eat fats. Right. Fats bad and dangerous. Um, so a couple of things. I've got a YouTube video called How to Find a Low-Carb Keto Doctor Near You. Watch that. Put your zip code into the websites and the show notes. And maybe you can find a low-carb keto-friendly doctor. They'll also understand carnivore. And then if, if he'd like to ask us questions, he can become a member of our private tribe. There's a link down in the show notes how to become a member of our group. Brandon, what causes ketones in urine if someone is not eating a low-carb diet? Uh, dehydration, uh, fasting, uh, illness. Lots of things can cause ketones in the urine. That's why it, they're very confusing <laughs> to some doctors. Uh, for pregnant women, for example, the first thing that doctors and nurses check when you walk in the door as a pregnant woman is urine. And we, we're checking for ketones to see if you're dehydrated. And if, and if you're or if you're on a ketogenic diet and you walk into the OB and you say, oh, I'm having belly pain and they check your urine and there's ketones in the urine, what's the first thing you're going to get? IV. Yeah. IV fluids because you're dehydrated. But a lot of doctors and nurses don't know you can be in ketosis if you fast, especially if you work out hard while you're fasted, you're going to be in ketosis uh, regardless of your diet, but then also just being dehydrated or not having eaten, eaten for a few hours or being sick can cause them to go up too. Eating extremely high fat can also produce ketones, 100%. even if you're not keto. Exactly. Rushman 93, why must we cook vegetables and not eat them raw? Thinking about buying Element, would drinking a flavored pack break a fast? Maybe for some of us, the sweet flavor might break a fast. That's why Nisha and I have been using the unflavored Element more and more. Uh, you're, are you completely... Well, that's not why I'm drinking the unflavored, but a lot of people who fast, who really want to be in a true fasted state, don't drink the flavored because of the sweetener. Um it depends on who you ask. It depends on what your goals are. It depends on why you are doing a fast. If you want to do a true fast, unflavored electrolytes of your choice and water yep. and black coffee. Yep. That's a true water fast. Yep. Um, now, why must you cook vegetables before you eat them? Why, why can't, why isn't it safe for everyone to eat raw vegetables? And that's because they contain lectins phytates, oxalates, phytoestrogens, saponophens, and a whole host of other phytochemicals. There is a normal distribution curve of every human physiological thing. Some people can eat 20 pounds of raw vegetables. Doesn't bother them a bit. Most people, if they eat too many raw vegetables, they'll have some inflammation. Some people, if they eat any raw vegetables, they're going to have inflammation. So that's why there's so many phytochemicals that the plants put in there to protect their flesh from being eaten that cause inflammation in some people, seemingly not everyone, but some people are very sensitive to that. I would say most people. I think that's probably true, but I try to meter it a little because I think yeah. a lot of people, they're already chronically inflamed anyway. And so yes. if they try, if they eat some raw vegetables, they're like, I can't feel any difference. Exactly. Whereas if they've done Nisha's 90 day elimination diet, and then reintroduce some raw vegetables, they'd be like, holy crap, these things don't like me, yeah. or vice versa. Thank you, Angela. Hi, Dawkins. What labs, if any, should I take now to compare to after I've been successful? Good question. Yep, and we have a full lab panel in the book, Common Sense Labs, which is now available on Amazon. <laughs> I wrote this with Kim Howerton, our good friend. She's a health coach. And we have a list of all the labs you should ask for. The problem is, is if, if now that you're successful, if you didn't get those same labs ordered before you started, you can't compare because you don't know what they were before. Um, so there's a link down in the show notes for that. Uh, also, if you join our group, you get free access to that sort of thing. It's on page 16 of this book. It might be different in the one on Amazon because we had to reformat a few things, but it says Common Sense Annual Panel. Yep. What we believe should be tested annually. And it's a. Uh, Pretty good list, and then it breaks down. Yeah, each and of those hence, labs. it's more than your doctor tests for annually. I promise. First, it was backwards, then it was upside down. I got it. I got it. We're good now. <laughs> Patrick is a 56, 56 year old female, weight gain at menopause. Will low carb keto work for me? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to slow down the weight gain, if not stop it and reverse it completely. 
I've got a video on this channel about <clears throat> menopause that will help you understand. Eric. Hey, Eric. Nine months carnivore, took LDL particle test, and then there's all his particle sizes and numbers. Uh, I'm confused. Assume I'm still on the right track. Yeah. So the problem with the NMR lipo profile of the particle test is there's not enough research to show whether it's really truly a meaningful marker uh, of chronic disease. Is it a proxy for heart attack stroke? Is it not? I don't, I think it's still effectively an experimental test. That's why I don't put a lot of stock in it. Christian, been on carnivore diet since January of 22. I have no acid reflux and I forgot about Barrett's esophagus. Should I be, should I worry? That's a good question because Barrett's esophagus is a precursor for esophageal cancer. Doesn't always mean you're going to get cancer, but it increases your odds. And so you might go back one time, Christian, even though the carnivore diet has, has completely cured your reflux, just like it did mine, you might go back to the gastroenterologist for one more EGD, one more scope, just to make sure that everything is cleared up. And for two, two reasons, one for you, so you can rest assured, okay, I fixed it. But selfishly for me, I want you to teach your gastroenterologist that eating a particular diet can reverse reflux and Barrett's esophagus, because many of them don't know. J and S, as a huge gardener, I'm struggling. Tomatoes, cucumbers, do they do raise my CGM blood sugar after one and a half months. I pulled the plant. What's your thoughts on eating in the season? My A1C is 11, was 11, now to 5.9. So J and S's A1C has went from 11, which is terrible, down to 5.9. As he, as he or she adopts a proper human diet. So then the question becomes, we've got a garden out here. We've got, there was a cucumber this long, Beckett, and I found it humongous. Oh and he's like, I said, you want to buy it? He said, no, give it to the chickens. It's a quote from Beckett Berry. And so I did. I broke it in half, gave it to the chickens. We had tomatoes, but mainly what we use our garden for now is herbs. We grow lots of uh, basil and oregano and cilantro and culantro. Who knows what culantro is? And uh, what else do we grow? Rosemary, Rosemary, lavender, onion and garlic, on, onion and garlic, stuff like I that. I consider that a seasoning. Yeah, I do too. And so I think it's fine for most people, JNS, to eat food, vegetables out of their garden during the season. We have blueberry bushes, and when they're ripe, Beckett and I go up there and we eat a few every day. If we beat the birds to them. That's right. <laughs> but we have to fight for them. We got to get there early, but then also that's for two weeks out of the year. And then for the rest of the year, I'd never touch a blueberry. And so I think it depends. Now, you're still pre-diabetic, JNS. And so if I were you, I would stay tight, tight, as low carb as you possibly can until you get that A1C down to 5.6. Then you're out of the woods. Then you can start to experiment. Next year, have a garden. And if nothing else, you can establish some goodwill with your neighbors by taking them some zucchini and tomatoes and cucumbers. But then every now and then you can eat one. I don't think it's the end of the world. Ron, thanks for the answer in the tribe. Wife had first chemo today. Started Joe Tippin's protocol five days ago. Chemo again tomorrow and Wednesday. Also found egg life rights wraps and she loves them. Yep. Awesome. Beautiful. Egg, egg life wraps are pretty tasty. And for those of you who love the tortilla burrito concept, you can make a lot of stuff with an egg life wrap. Mm. They're not perfect, but they're way the hell better than any tortilla you're going to find at the store. You can make your own too. I oh, think so there's some recipes on YouTube. BBLL. Non HDL 115, Triggs 91, HDL 38, LDL 97, total cholesterol 153. Uh, four. Is this very bad and how to fix it right away? Thank you. So your tri triglycerides are beautiful. Your HDL is on the low side. You're going to increase that, as I said earlier, by eating more red meat and lifting heavy things. Uh, your LDL and total cholesterol are not bad at all. That's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Carnivore Scott, dark, very long-time fan. First time catching you live. That's right. Welcome. Thank you for all you do and have done. God bless. Uh, thank Thanks. you. Who else is this? This is your first live you've ever caught. Type new into the comments. I want to see. Thank Who's you, new? Rebecca. Thank you, Anthony. My blouse keeps coming over. <laughs> My blouse. Ah, uh, FNP feel good. Anyone need a remote nurse practitioner? I got fired from my new job because I wasn't following current best practices, ordering unnecessary tests and stems, etc. Gotcha. There All you right. go. There you go. FNP feel good. Buck, 
I know this is off topic, pet related. Can I actually feed my dog raw chicken drumsticks with the bones? Yeah, I would. I do this if we have chicken <laughs> in the fridge go bad, which happens once every three bad months. For us, maybe not as bad. Uh, right. Yeah, dogs are the, actually. If a human were, were eating a proper diet out in the wild, we could eat that. If it was a little off, we'd be fine if we ate that. But I'm not taking that chance. And so we give it to the dogs. If the bones have not been cooked, I think it's 100% safe to give them that. Now, Nisha has some problem giving the dogs cooked chicken bones because they tend to break in shards if, they're, if they've been cooked. Is that right? And then that might puncture something. That is a risk. Yes. Yeah, that's it's a small risk, I think, but it's still probably valid. Now, there are many veterinarians out there that will tell you not to give your dog any bones whatsoever. What did the vet tech tell you? Yeah, it wasn't even the vet. It was the tech said not to give her Lily or Poodle, who has a very strong a hunting dog. dog. Uh, anything harder than my kneecap. So if you hit your knee with it and it hurts, and don't give it to the dog. Right. Like, yeah, dogs are a new species. They've never she had bones. She gets bones all the time. We give her what beef femurs all the, yeah, all the beef all the pork bones pig ears pig knuckles uncooked chicken bones yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely They're, that's foolishness to say such a thing adam my partner was off the pill for 12 years for heavy or on, the, on the pill for 12 years for heavy irregular period yep. most likely now has post pill amenorrhea uh carnivore for four months maybe make sure that she's eating high fat carnivore and plenty of Food. And eating until she's satiated, <laughs> not portion controlling. And uh, then be prepared. If you guys are wanting a baby, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you're like, I don't know, then you you might want to think about another form of birth control because high fat carnivore will get you knocked up plus the uh, private enterprise. I'm not pregnant right now. Don't. Uh, I have to be careful well, with the I mean, things that I've had. We, haven't, heard, we no. haven't announced anything. Oh, shut your dirty mouth. We haven't announced anything. He is full of shite, okay? Don't listen to shit talking. Talk. Rachel, on the Common Sense Labs, I know I would need basic ones, and I want to get them. I don't have insurance, and it is a lot to pay $364, which mm. three to four would be, which three to four would be most important. I have no issues other than weight. Yep. I'm at 231 pounds. So if, if weight and you're having trouble losing weight, or you keep gaining weight even though you think you're eating good, I would get a full thyroid panel, an A1C, a fasting insulin, lipid panel, CBC, your analysis. Uh, that's going to knock off quite a few of them. But the full thyroid panel, that for you, that's probably the, the biggest, most important one because you likely have hypothyroid Hashimoto's and you just are undiagnosed. The trigger man. Trigger man. My PCP informed me the advanced lipid panel was no longer offered by the lab. My labs, they will see 5.1. Huzzah. Triglyceride 60. Huzzah. HDL 71. LDL 207. Total cholesterol 290. Insulin 6.9. He recommended a statin and I laughed inside. Yeah. I'm a silly doctor. Uh, I think doctors are probably getting more and more shy when they see labs like this. They, they have to at this point to be going, this, this must be a keto or a carnivore person because I never see A1Cs of 5.1 ever. I never see a, an HDL of 71. And so instead of giving you a high five or smacking you on the booty and congratulations, <laughs> I mean, that's probably frowned on most I think that would get you a lot. But you know what I'm yeah. saying? They're going to yell at you and say you need a statin. Okay. Okay. Whatever. No, Jennifer I'm first. Sorry. Jennifer, have you seen or read where a carnivore low carb diet has any impact on glaucoma, positive or negative? We haven't seen any negative feedback whatsoever. There's some limited research that glaucoma is related to hyperinsulinemia, high insulin, which is going to come from eating too many carbohydrates. So lowering your carbohydrate intake, thus getting your insulin down, should slow, slow the development and progression. Should. I said should. Uh, we have never had somebody say, hey, I ate keto or carnivore. My glaucoma came or it got worse. We've never heard that. But we have heard a few people say that I had glaucoma and my pressures are much better now since I'm on a proper human diet. So there's not really any, any black or white answer to that yet. But it looks like the preliminary uh, data coming back in is that it probably is beneficial. Dawn uh, told calcium in milk is good for zinc 
flu during welding. So that's, she was talking uh, about her boyfriend. Yeah, let me check into that, Dawn, and you do the same. Do a good internet search and see if you can find anything that supports that. I've never heard that, but I will look into it after this live. How many of you guys have clicked the share button? Some of you guys forgot to do that. That's the way we're going to reach new people who have never heard this information. We need your help. We need you to click that share button and share this to your favorite social media. Would you pretty please do that right now? That'd be great. Thank you. Mary says, my friend with PKD, uh, her doctor says no red meat. What say no, you, doctor? That, I say that her doctor is well-meaning, but currently ignorant. There's actually great data, and I'm in the process of making a polycystic kidney uh, disease, disease uh, video, and absolutely PKD is intimately related to hyperinsulinemia. There's actually studies where when they put them on a diet that lowered their, their chronically high insulin level, the uh, PKD noticeably improved on scans. So yeah, you should have no problem with that. That should, that it should improve. Absolutely. All right, guys, time for an intermission, but first, have you shared this video? Share this video. You know why? Because you wouldn't know about this man sitting right here if someone else hadn't shared this video. I guarantee you, most of you are here because someone shared this information with you. Some of you found him through a swift Google search, but let's help people find good, well thought out, well resourced information. I'm just going to brag on my husband, Aww. okay? He makes great videos, quick, sweet, to the point and always cites his sources in the description, all right? Which is a red flag. If there's no sources in the description, red flag for you guys. <laughs> if you want more support, we have the best moderators, soon to be certified coaches in the whole entire galaxy, all right? And they're yeah. right here in this group for you to help you out, to walk you through this along with us. But if you need that support, and YouTube is a little too messy for you. Come hang out with us in the group. I don't think you made a banner for this, but I'm going to talk about it. Anyway. Which one? <clears throat> one more time. This book right here, okay? This is so important. This is such a good resource for you as a patient because this allows you to have some confidence when you walk into that room to talk to your provider and feel confident about the things that you want to ask for. You are the only advocate that can go in that room with you unless your husband or your sister or somebody's in there with you, but you're your best advocate. This is such a good tool. And y'all, it's a bestseller on Amazon now. Well, <laughs> one of the most common things we hear about when somebody comes out of a doctor's office is I, I asked him to order those labs that you talked about. And he said that that was foolishness. There's no point in that. Or he would say, I don't even know what those are. And so with this book, you can say, well, doctor, let me tell you why these are important. I'll read for you a chapter from uh, page 22 right here. The reason I need a fasting insulin, the reason I need a full thyroid panel is the following. And also, if you need the ICD-10 uh, codes so that you can file it properly so the insurance will pay for it, I've got those too because it's in the Common Sense Labs book. You're welcome, doctor. If, if you want to hang out with some cool people in the Smoky Mountains, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, contact Rebecca at tailoredketo.health. It's her email down there and talk to her. Guess who's going to be there? Well, I wasn't actually talking about you. <laughs> Kelly Hogan. Kelly Hogan. Maria Emmerich. And we're also going to make a pop-in appearance, but you're going to get to hang out with Kelly and Maria in a super intimate environment, yes, ask questions, comfy. eat super good food. Maria's going to cook, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> in the most beautiful, one, well, one of the most beautiful places, I think, yeah. in the country. And you can go to Dollywood while you're there. There's only a few spaces left. So make sure if you're wanting to join this, you talk to Rebecca tonight because it's a cabin. It's like almost sold out, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. There's not, it's not like a huge convention. It's very small and intimate. So if you want to do that, you better yep. do it soon. We're also going to be in Louisville, mm -hmm. Kentucky mm -hmm. coming up. And we're also going to be in Dixon, Tennessee in Next just a few well, days. <laughs> yeah, the, this weekend. And there's links to the Louisville event down in the show notes and also the Dixon event down in the show notes. Now, the Dixon event is sold out for in-person tickets. 
but you can buy a virtual ticket that's cheaper than the in-person tickets. This is not our event. That's it just right. happens to be in Tennessee near us, but we are not, it's not ours. We don't run it. We're just going to be there and it's going to be awesome. I know a lot of you are actually going to come. All right. Back that's to your regularly cool. scheduled programming. All right. We did, did we do that one? No. Okay. No. Damn. Been fighting a rash in various parts of my body for almost two months now. Primary doctor and dermatologist having no look. Steroid shots, pills, creams, nothing helps. Allergic to baby powder, so talc and supplements. Root cause, question mark, idea. Maybe. Now, all you guys pay attention to, to Dan's question. Dan is worried about what the root cause of this is. That sounds like a good thing to figure out. But his doctors, including a dermatologist, a skin specialist, nobody's done a punch biopsy of this rash. They haven't got any tissue to send to pathology. They're just throw, blindly throwing shit at his rash, hoping it'll go away. That's not really how you're supposed to practice medicine. They need to get a biopsy of this rash, send it to the lab and say, oh my God, you have the following because it's in black and white on the pathology report. Now we actually know how to treat this. So Dan, I would go back to the dermatologist and say, hey, I, I had a consult with my YouTube doctor and he said that you should do a punch biopsy of the rash so that you know what the hell you're treating instead of just throwing random steroids at me. Thank you, Doc. Rebecca, started carnivore 10 weeks ago, lost 26 pounds so far. Uh -oh. And here we go. I feel like our progress is very slow. Now, Rebecca, <laughs> go ahead, read it out. I had a partial hysterectomy five years ago and think that may be slowing my progress. It may be slowing your progress. If However, that's if your ovaries, yes. But congratulations, Rebecca on losing 26 pounds in 10 weeks. Huzzah. That's a victory. You should be very proud of that. You should stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself and say, good job, girl. You kicked ass. Okay. Now, if you're worried that you're not losing fast enough, then there's things that we can do to remedy that, in, including checking a full lab panel to see if there's a thyroid, adrenal, or sex hormone issue. Probably is a sex hormone issue, especially if they took your ovaries, if it was a total hysterectomy. Oh, you just had a partial, so you probably still have them. I don't know how what your age is, so it's hard to know if hormones are involved or not, but the way you find it out is to get the labs checked. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Sammy. 37-year-old male, type 2 diabetic since uh, October 22. A1C at diagnosis, 13.6. Ouch. Now it's down to 5.7. With diet, exercise, and 2 grams of metformin, is there any hope for reversing the type 2 diabetes neuropathy and the diabetes-induced ED? This is the part a lot of men don't get, is that you can develop complete and total ED from having uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. Where's I just saw three guys sit up out of the recliner right there and was like, well, what did he just say? But it can get yeah. worse than that. Yeah, it's you worse than that. Yeah, it can yeah, get, get worse. But the good news is, Sammy, is that <clears throat> neuropathy tends to continue to slowly improve as months go by. Sometimes it might take two years for it to go completely away or get 95% better, but you you all but reversed your your type 2 diabetes. Now you only barely have pre-diabetes. You got one more tenth of a point to go on your A1C. Keep doing what you're doing. And you'll notice the neuropathy keeps getting less and less and less severe as the months go by. And I would predict that the ED will become less and less severe as time goes by as well. But it may not come completely back like when you were 17, but it should improve over the months. Lori. Okay. Lori Lee. Anthony, age 47, male, very active, 6'3", 180 pounds. What should my ketone levels be at? Yeah, so uh, if you've been eating keto more than three months or carnivore at all for even one day, you don't need to worry about checking ketone levels. That's, you're wasting your time. And if money. you're eating true, right? That's right. Yeah, and we don't mean keto bread and keto shakes and cookie snacks and pies. We mean half your plate covered with meat, half your plate covered with low carb veg, a few nuts, a few berries. That's that's what actual real keto is. Carnivore is all meat and eggs. So if you're eating carnivore, you don't have to worry about this. You're going to be in ketosis for most of the day, okay? If you're eating high-fat keto, very low-carb, you're going to be in ketosis most of the day. Your body's got all this taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. No insanity. Ketovore, ketovore for four years, carnivore for three weeks. New blood test, uh, total cholesterol 101, triglycerides 60, LDL 50, HDL 
uh, 50. All low, should I be worried? I don't think so. See if you can find an old lipid panel that you had in the past. Uh, and if your cholesterol used to be 200, now it's 100, that can sometimes be a sign that there's an underlying disease process going on because typically we don't see cholesterol, total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol go down this low on keto, ketovore or carnivore. And so your HDL and triglycerides are primo, but uh, see if you've got an old lipid panel. And if you do, you might want to talk to your doctor about checking for a few other things. Thank you. Thank you, Galen. That's a good name. Thank you. Makes me think of anatomy when I hear the word Galen. <laughs> Southern Bamba. All right. Read it just like that. The vitamin D level 21 point. I'm not making fun of you. I talk this way. We're right next to On keto diet, how much vitamin D should I be taking and how long does it take to raise it to normal? Thank you very much. So vitamin D25, that's the test you won't check, not a vitamin D125. And if it's 21.8, that's too low. You want it to be between 50 and 100. And so I've got a video on this channel about vitamin D rich foods. You can eat enough of those and get enough sunlight that you won't need to take a supplement at all, especially in Bama. But if you just want to take a, a, a supplement, I recommend 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 in a gel cap with MCT or olive oil. You can get that off Amazon. Beef it to be fit. Be fit to be fit. I like it. Good idea to keep good varbs, I think carbs carbs in the house like uh, live kimchi in case of cravings are just bad idea. And I don't think fermented low carb foods because kimchi is fairly low carb. It's not crazy high carb. I don't seem to suffer from the, the cravings six days a week. I'm 100% carnivore. Yeah. And if you're going to eat some vegetables, make sure they're low carb. And make sure, preferably, that they're fermented. That's going to make them much less inflammatory. I love kimchi. Me, I do too, especially the stinky kind. Rachel also forgot to mention I am a day 19 start carnivore with a YouTube channel. Awesome. I'm going to have basic labs done for comparison for now. And ah, like, gotcha, well Rachel. Done, yes, Rachel. Yes, do that. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're in our group, you're welcome to post your YouTube channel link in the main chat. Because I love it when you guys start a YouTube channel because you fixed your health. Now you're going to help other people fix their health. That's cool. Ned. Ned. 16 no, no, no. <laughs> Total cholesterol, 189. Triggs, 57. HDL, 79. VLDL, 11. LDL, 99. April B, 73. Glucose, 103. 61-year-old male carnivore for seven months. Off Lipitor, four months. Doctor says increased Lipitor from 10 to 20 uh, due to the uh, LDL. Yeah, he wants you to he wants you to have a uh, what I would consider a, a an unnaturally low LDL cholesterol. I don't agree with that. I, I'm not your doctor. You need to continue to have conversations with your doctor. But I would like for my LDL cholesterol to be uh, right in the middle of normal. My video about how not to die of a heart attack on this channel, uh, actually the sweet spot is, a, is an LDL cholesterol of about 130. That's where the lowest all-cause mortality is. And so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want my LDL cholesterol to be 45 to 55. That would worry me. You got Ned. Cat Linden. You know, I was born in Linden, Tennessee. That's the first and last time any man ever spanked my ass. Any man. That's right. I don't know if you were going to pick up on that or not. Please help me understand. I'm, if eating a lot of fat doesn't make you gain weight, if you eat more than you need, where does the excess fat go? Well, Kat, if you're eating to your hunger and you stop eating when you're comfortably stuffed, you're not going to eat too much fat. That's the beauty of this hardwired, wonderful, wonderful creation called your body, Kat. Your body. Yeah, your body's not broken. If you're eating a proper human diet, you can eat all the yummy fat and protein you want. You're going to stop eating it before you eat too much. That's the beauty of this. <clears throat> Thanks, Ray. Snag. Snag. Been carnivore, lion diet for 13 weeks, battling mast cell caused by all pharma drugs I'm taking. Uh, hit anaphylactic point last night. Doctor okayed me to discontinue all meds. Should I do an intermittent fast to start or up electrolytes? I'd, I'd probably not change too many things at once, Snag. I'd keep eating your lion diet if that's what you're eating right now. And for those of you who don't know what a lion diet is, it's ruminant meat, salt, and water only. So cow, venison, um, sheep, goat. sheep, goat, 
and salt and water. That's it. And it may sound very restrictive, but I promise you snags had so many medical problems that that doesn't feel restrictive at all. If it's going to help those, I'd keep doing that and, and, and usually taking your electrolytes. And then after maybe another month of being off the meds, then if you want to play around with fasting, I think it's fine. Thanks, Phil. Cutie. Cutie. My girl. It has taken six months, <clears throat> but it looks like my blood sugar is finally trending downward. Thanks. Huzzah. Thank yourself. You're the one that did it. Brock. Male, 26-year-old, arthritis, IBS, low fat, uh, leads to inc incomplete evacuation, high fat diarrhea. Uh, taking bentonite clay as a binder helps a lot with diarrhea, bile acid, malabsorption. Maybe there are uh, several digestive enzymes, some over the counter, like ox bile supplement that you can order off Amazon. Uh, but your doctor actually can prescribe you uh, pancreatic and uh, enzymes that break down carbs, protein and fat. And so if any of you guys think that you're you're having a problem with malabsorption or you're just not making enough enzymes, talk to your doctor. These medications are fairly innocuous, and if you are having a problem with that, with not enough pancreatic secretions, that'll fix it immediately. But uh, my guess is you probably just need to keep doing what you're doing, and and I'd, I'd say carnivore, Brock, until all this calms down, and then you can decide carnivore, ketovore, keto. Leroy on ketovore, mostly carnivore for four months today, down from two thirty two to one ninety three. After about 20 minutes of driving, I get dizzy spells, had my eyes checked, taking beef organ supplements, going to try the FC maneuver. Anything else you can suggest? So you're driving and you're just stationary and you feel dizzy. dizzy. So do you mean that the things are spinning in your visual field or you just feel like you're going to pass out or do you feel like mm. you're black kind of closing in? I need more information because a lot of these things people use words to describe them and that's, I don't know really what they mean, but if you mean that things are spinning, that's almost certainly an inner ear problem. So the, the Epley maneuvers might help. Uh, and then if that doesn't help, see an ear, nose and throat specialist. Christian, thanks for your recent answer to my question. We'll do a CRP is one. CRP is one. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll do. Rheumatoid yep. arthritis <laughs> in remission. Rheumatologist was astonished. Thank you, Dr. Ken and Nisha. I love when doing. doctors are astonished. Yeah, that's our, that's, I love it when you guys get to astonish your doctor. Like, how the hell did you do that? Then you can teach your doctor. David. David. Oh, I'm going to, let me read this one. David, David. Hey, I see you, brother. Okay. I love how your wife looks like a Hollywood actress, yet a down to earth Southern woman to the bone. Much respect. I love you both. You're both awesome people. Thank you so Thank much. You. David. Thank that's you. That's very sweet. She does look like a, Mm -hmm. Serena. Hey, Serena. Do you or anyone watching have any tips or tricks to treat uh, BPPV? That was thing that makes me sleepy yeah. and have done the Epley's. The spins aren't fun. Yeah. So benign positional vertigo, basically paroxysmal. Uh, sometimes you need the Epley maneuvers done by a professional. You probably watch some videos and you do them yourself. But there's a longer version of that where they hold you in position much longer. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes a low dose round of steroids will help this. Not enough to, to kick up your metabolic problems, just enough to calm the inflammation. And then if you're not already uh, Serena, I'd try 90 days of carnivore and see if that lowered the inflammation in the inner ear even more. Ray, 60 year old male, six foot two, 220. Good labs, A1C 5.6. Bad breath on keto carnivore help. Uh, go see your dentist, Ray. If you've been on keto or carnivore for, for a few months, there's no reason you should still have bad breath. You've probably got a, a cavity and a tooth that you've had back from your years of eating high carb and sugar <laughs> that needs to be addressed. Serena had her physical therapist help her do the maneuver. Ah, sweet. Okay. But still having problems. Uh, ale fasting, fasting, hey, dark B niche and babies, cholesterol 226, triglyceride 71, HDL 66, non HDL 160. How is this? Huzzah, carry on, live your life, have fun. Be fit to be fit. <laughs> My soon to be wife will be turning 37 soon. Can you please bri briefly explain how carnivore might affect her fertility? It's going to make her very fertile, yeah. so. Keep that in mind if you yeah. want more babies. 
yeah. yippee. If you don't, maybe take precautions, yep. especially if she's eating right now. If she goes carnivore and restricts how much she's eating and isn't eating enough, then it can make her lose her period. So yep. if she needs to eat plenty of fat with her protein, eat when she's hungry till she's full. Yep. And um, then she's going to have those two pink lines, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys, two patients I had early when I was first recommending keto was a 48-year-old and a 51-year-old, female, both females. And they came to me not feeling right, and they were both pregnant. And they had started keto about three, four months before that at my initiation. And the 48-year-old was very – she was like, oh – Hallelujah. We've been trying to have a baby for years. We thought it was too late. The 51 year old was not happy with me at all and was not happy with me for about three months until she made peace with it. But when you eat a proper human diet, the only thing that it possibly can do is increase your fertility, right? Because think about it, uh, a, an animal in the wild, if it's starving or if you're feeding it just styrofoam garbage, that's not nutrition. It can't make a baby with that. It's not going to get pregnant or if it gets pregnant, it'll lose it. Uh, if, if there's tons of stress, if there's just no good nutrition around, animals can't get pregnant. You, my friend, are an animal. So when I start feeding you a proper human diet, the only possible option is it's going to improve your fertility. Our good friend, Dr. Robert oh, Kiltz, yeah. is a fertility specialist in New York State. And he puts every single one of his female patients who are having trouble getting pregnant, the first thing he does is puts them on a carnivore diet. He probably puts the guys on a carnivore diet. hundred percent, yes. He told me, yeah. Because that helps men's fertility as well. Absolutely. So if you guys want to have a baby, high-fat carnivore and then, mm -hmm. you know, extracurriculars. You want some super swimmers, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to make your testosterone go up. It's going to make your swimmers have little Popeye muscles, and they're going to be looking for the target. Absolutely. Here's Lily Poo. Can you just see her? She always comes I did not see her. Debbie Green's question. I answered one of her questions. Oh, did you get it? Okay. It right right. okay. Thank you very much. Yahasan. Scott, carnivore good for lymphedema. Yes. So for any of you guys who have lymphedema or lipedema, a, the lower carb diet you eat, the less severe your symptoms are going to be. Okay. Because it's going to lower your levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation, and it's going to help with the fluid issues that you're having. Uh, now, if you have these, they, it may not go completely away, but a proper human diet is going to improve the symptoms of lymphedema better than any other diet on the planet. Good question. Heidi, I was diagnosed with PCOS and insulin resistance. Yes, because insulin res uh, hyperinsulinemia causes PCOS. Since starting the keto diet, my cycle has become regular. Now, Heidi is more fertile because she's eating a proper human diet. Will the keto diet also help with hirsutism or should I take inositol? So hirsutism is just uh, growing unnecessary, unwanted hair in places you don't want it. It comes along with PCOS in some women, not all. Uh, but what you're going to notice is the hirsutism, Heidi, it's going to take longer to go away than the insulin resistance. Uh, typically, it does get better with time. Those dark, coarse hairs tend to turn back into to peach fuzz which I promise most guys don't mind a little peach fuzz at all. Uh, but the, but that's not going to happen overnight. You can try the inositol. There's not a lot of research to back it up, but it's not going to hurt anything. David, 3,000 watching and only 900 likes. What's up with that? Wake up, people. Hey, everybody, hit the thumbs up button. David has called you out on it. There should be at least like 2,000 thumbs ups, right? People get in the moment. I know. And a lot of people it. watch on the TV, and there's no can way. You, can you thumb? I mean, maybe you can thumb on the TV, but I think you have to kind I think of you have to scroll it. up and go past the channel. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Casey. Thank you very much, RLE. CB Ketovore, my 76-year-old dad just had his second diverticulitis attack in the last six months. Was also hospitalized on both occasions. How should he eat to prevent re re reduce further attacks? So I've actually got a, a YouTube video about diverticulitis, maybe two. Uh, he needs to eat a proper human diet, either real whole food keto or ketovore or carnivore. Mm. Uh, diverticulosis is the condition he has, but when, a, when one of those diverticuli get flared up, then he has diverticulitis. And the way to, to, to decrease the odds of him having diverticulitis is to lower the chronic inappropriate inflammation and lower the amount of sugar that's in his colon. Mm. That's going to calm all this down. 
Um, sorry, we have to talk about Miss Catherine Stewart in the chat. Okay. Can confirm carnivore leads to a baby. Twenty-one weeks this week. Congratulations. Huzzah. I hope I hope you were that's what you're wanting because what? you're gonna be more for, fertile when you eat a proper human diet. That is what? just gonna happen. Can I help you, ma'am? Hmm? Go lay down. Go, go lay down. Let's see. This way. AK, 31-year-old female, had di bilateral oophorectomy at 16 years of age. Ouch. Wow. Doctor put me on birth control as HRT. Uh, recently started having major allergy symptoms like stuffy nose, skin rashes very often. Is this related to the hormones? I do keto two years now, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure why your birth control is not hormone replacement therapy. Okay. Birth control pills are fake synthetic hormones. That is not hormone replacement. You need to find a doctor that does bioidentical hormone replacement and go see them. These, uh, these fake hormones are not helping you at all. Marilyn, will carnivore help frequent urination? It depends on why you have frequent urination. There's about 30 causes. If you have an undiagnosed bladder infection, then probably not. You're going to need some antibiotics for that. If you, there's many other th causes that cause frequent urination that a proper human diet will help. So try carnivore for 90 days, but also go see your doctor if you haven't already. The sizzle, taking levothyroxine, that's generic synthroid for thyroid, for hypothyroid. Been using iodine drops two daily. Uh, TSH was 6.6 .6 in June. Should I stop taking the levo? No, your TSH is too high. Uh, I would ask your doctor to switch you over to Armour or Nature Thyroid, which is a natural desiccated thyroid replacement hormone, and I also ask them to increase the dose. You want your TSH to be somewhere between 1 and 2.5. Thank you, RLE. Thank you, Heart Blues. Troy, I've lost 25 pounds in 14 days on a carnivore diet. However, I have a lot of acid reflux all the time. 39-year-old male, six foot one. Was 385, now 360. I'm uh, sub 1,800 calories because of heartburn. Any suggestions? Go see your doctor. <coughs> Excuse me. Go, go see your doctor. Don't let them put you on an acid blocker. Just make, I want you to go to the doctor to make sure there's nothing concerning going on. Keep eating a carnivore diet. I predict that this is going to get completely better and go completely away. And as soon as your reflux gets better, I want you to go back up to eating until you're comfortable with stuff. And actually, eating sub-1800 may be part of the reason that you're having heartburn. I want you to eat until you're comfortable with stuff as, as well as you can. But go see your doctor to make sure nothing else is going on under the surface. Thank you, Laura Lee. What you got? I know there's a lot of newbies here. There always is. If you didn't already know this, on Dr. Bird's channel, if you click on Playlist, there is a Keto 101 playlist with like, I don't know, 40 videos. There's a Carnivore 101 playlist as well. So if you're new and you want some information on how to get started and the common FAQs, those type of things, there's literally an entire playlist dedicated to Keto and Carnivore on his channel. Yep. You can also do this little thing in YouTube. Use it as a search engine if you're like, what about iodine? Type in Dr. Barry Iodine. And it will bring up all the videos that he's done about it. I do. He's got like three or four thyroid, diabetes, PCOS, cancer, like whatever. Type it in, Dr. Barry keyword, and it'll bring up any videos that he's done about that. So make sure you're doing that because it's a great resource of Absolutely. information. And you, you, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I've got almost 900 videos on this channel. And so just go to the YouTube box and type in Dr. Barry and whatever medical condition, whatever medicine you're on, Whatever nutrition question you have, I probably got a video about it. Pia, hi, what's your opinion on detoxes? Uh, Oki, castor oil packs, et cetera. Waste of time and money. Will keto, ketoboy, carnivore naturally detox the body? So every human on the planet has a liver and has at least one kidney. Those are the ultimate detoxes. So if you want to, basically, you don't have to ever spend money on a detox. They're all wasted money. Uh, uh, gallbladder detox, gallbladder cleanse, liver cleanse. All, no, it's all bullshit. Stop poisoning your body. Yeah, just stop poisoning <laughs> your body with the standard American diet 
do some fasting. That is the ultimate cleanse. And it's how much does that cost? It's free ninety nine. It's F R E E, free ninety nine. I like that. Yeah. So don't you don't have to buy something to fix a problem. If if you need a detox, then just don't eat for a day or two. And some of you are like going, wait a minute, that, that you'll die. No, I've got a another playlist on this channel called Fasting One Hundred and One that teaches you all about fasting and how you won't die. I promise. Okay. Uh, but yes, eating keto, keto or carnivore, what it, what it's mainly the power of that is, is you've removed the inflammatory high carb, high fructose junk out of your diet. Your body's just automatically going to detox and go back to healthy. That's why you see all these people saying, Hey, you know, I'm so much better now. It's not because carnivores got some magic in it that heal them. They just stopped poisoning their body with the slow poisons that come from Kellogg's and Kraft Heinz and General Mills and Post and Mondelez and Pepsi and Coke. No, all that shit's poison, just to put it blunt, okay? You don't need any of it, first of all. And secondly, it is inflammatory and it is bad for you. Your body's going to be sick and inflamed and toxed if you eat that and drink that crap all the time. So when you stop all that, your body naturally detoxes. it. Get it? It's cool how your body's almost like programmed to be healthy if you'll stop poisoning it. I just love that. It's just like a car. You put the wrong stuff in it. Mess it up. Ruin it, right? Thank you, Holly. <clears throat> Did you okay. have something? Wrong? I mean, I got a lot to say. <laughs> well, bring it, bring it, woman. <laughs> Michael, four months, B, 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 and E. What's that stand for? Beef, butter, bacon, and 35 grams of carbs a day from seltzer. Weights, uh, lift weights five days a week, and I am... Um, uh, UPS driver, so quite a bit of walking going on. Recent blood, uh, total cholesterol 200, HDL 115, LDL 73, Triggs 41. Why such a high HDL and low LDL? Dude, I, why are you questioning this? These labs are stellar. Nobody can argue with this. You're doing exactly what you need to be doing. Keep it up. Case Z, I have extreme neuropathy in my hands and feet. I'm unable to wear socks and shoes and am in so much pain. I want to heal. Will ketobore reduce inflammation and heal me like carnivore? Yes, perhaps not as quickly, but yes, even keto with real whole food keto that's meat heavy, red meat heavy is going to help with this neuropathy. And again, the reason that you have neuropathy is because of the poison that you're introducing in your, to your body on a daily basis. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. Nerves heal very and slowly. Vitamin P. Patience. Some old patience. I tell my clients yeah. to bridge with ketobore to carnivore. Yeah. So yeah. start moving towards carnivore by increasing your fatty meat and decreasing your vegetables and decreasing your dairy and maybe even the sweeteners. Usually it's more dairy and vegetables than the sweeteners, but some people are sensitive to sweeteners. Start cutting them in half then cut them in half again and do that over six to nine weeks and then go to <clears throat> carnivore. Yep, absolutely. Lena, on me always. Dr. B, I have psoriasis and systemic candida at 65. I don't eat sugar. I don't drink alcohol. Meat only diet for two months now. When will I see clear skin and pink tongue? So Lena, if your skin and your tongue are not noticeably better after two months of carnivore, then there's most likely something else going on. I would go to a, a infectious disease doc and have them check all the labs to check your immune system function because this the, they both should be, this, the candida should be gone and the psoriasis should be noticeably better as in when your neighbors see you, they're like, oh my God, your psoriasis is so much better. If that's not the case, you need to go see a specialist and say, I think something's wrong with my immune system. Because there's not, there's really no other reason for that to be happening, unless you still have some other offending chemical or poison or thing in your life, something in your environment. But 95% of the time, it's something in your food. Dick signs. Okay. I'm 12. Dirty, I think dirty I already got my answer. I just can't stay out of the fermented cups and cabbage. Okay, Dick signs. <laughs> Fermented cups. What's it? What is that? And cabbage, cabbage. I make. What do you possibly meant by? So 
let's just talk about fermented food for a second and hope you, this will clear this up for Dick Signs. Uh, the reason your ancestors fermented foods, fermented beans, fermented cabbage, is to make it less inflammatory. Now, there's a lot of gurus out there like, oh, if you eat fermented foods, if you drink kefir and kombucha, there's magic stuff in there because it's fermented. That, no, none of that's true. The reason we fermented dairy is to make it less inflammatory for adults. What? Cukes. Cukes. Cucumbers. Okay, I don't know why you're autocorrect. Put that, Dick Signs. <laughs> that, that's your own personal thing. I don't know. But that's why our ancestors fermented vegetables, is to make them less inflammatory. It doesn't release any magical thing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, no, this guy said that, that kombucha and kefir had magic. No, they don't have any magic in them. They're just less inflammatory after you ferment them. That's why our ancestors did that. No magic cups here. No magic cups. That's right. Yes. Cukes. I got you. Bruh, bruh. Oh. Heptic ulcer for several months. Tried strict carnivore for seven days, but stomach pain got worse each day. Uh, should I push past this, try cabbage juice or something else? Yeah, cabbage juice is not going to help a bit. I'd keep doing carnivore. Keeping in close proximity to your doctor, because if you have an established peptic ulcer, then you need close follow-up with your doctor. Now, if you're just guessing that you have a peptic ulcer and you don't know what you really have, you need to go see your doctor and get an EGD done, the scope down the throat. Uh, will you stop? <laughs> what is wrong with you? The comments are agging me on. I can't help it. Y'all stop. What's wrong with you? You wouldn't be acting like this if your mama was watching. This is high-quality TV. That's <laughs> Uh, so I would I would stick to carnivore. There's nothing that's going to calm down the inflammation in your stomach and the epithelial lining of your gastrointestinal system better than a carnivore diet. But if you haven't seen your doctor, go see your doctor immediately. Elena, my understanding is that animals store toxins in the fat tissues like people, right? No, no. Uh, and all animals have a liver and kidneys that the liver tags any toxins and then the kidneys remove those toxins. That happens for every mammal on the planet and most animals on the planet. Uh, the, it, this is a very common myth that lots of toxins are stored in the fat. That's just not true. The animal would die if there was lots of toxins stored in their fat. Think about that. Think that through. All right. Last two questions. Big guy outdoors, 472 pounds down to 428, 44 pounds gone in 52 days. Huzzah. Well you have to change your name to medium guys outdoors <laughs> before long or tall guys outdoors. I love it. That's freaking awesome. Good job. And I know your friends and family have started to ask you about this, big guys carnival outdoors, and I want you to teach them. You don't have to have an MD or a PhD to teach people how to eat a proper human diet. You just have to fix your own health and then you can help your friend or neighbor. Big guys outdoors, AKA medium guys, hard blues, just over and over, right? Carnivore diet for people with gastro bypass surgery. Do I need to take vitamins or will beef be enough? Also, I love hamburger, but two hours after later, I'm so hungry, can't afford steak. Any suggestions? Yes. First of all, all men need to, Get over here and share it with the class. <laughs> share it with the class. So if you've had a Rowan wire, a very aggressive bariatric surgery, gastric bypass, they have basically either chopped out or, or sequestered the main part of your small intestine that absorbs vitamins and minerals. So many people, after gastric bypass, they have to take vitamins and minerals their entire life because their gastrointestinal system has been permanently mutilated. OK, but with that being said, beef is going to be your best option. If you can eat chicken liver, cod liver, beef liver, calf liver, goat liver, goose liver. I would highly encourage you to learn to like that because that's going to be a great source. But you may still have to take supplements. Um, I don't know why you're so hungry after hamburger. I suspect you're buying the very lean hamburger. You need to be buying 70, 30. And then I'll tell you guys, let me tell you a trick. When you fry a pound of hamburger, right, and then there's all that grease in the skillet, that's fat. You're So you're losing that fat. What I do is when the ground beef is fried, I ch chop it up, right, with a spatula, and then I crack a couple of eggs and put in there, and I start stirring it up very aggressively. 
the eggs soak up all the fat. And then you got a clean skillet. You've got all the fat and the protein from the meat plus the fat and protein from the eggs. I hope that helps you guys. I hope you enjoyed my wife's elegant display of sophistication. If you like this stuff, then, you know, hit that button. That's right. That's right. Uh, or you can come hang out with me on my channel. Mm, Nisha. Nisha. How do you spell that? N-E-I-S-H-A. Nisha. Good job. All right. Um, this is exactly what my teachers had to put up with. I just want you to know this is. That's it. Yeah, we're I'm still both 12 still years 12 old. Year old. Yeah, we yeah. And we, we like it that way. We like it just fine. Now, if you didn't get your question answered tonight, consider becoming part of our private group. There's a link down in the show notes. You can go. Or here. you can go to drberry.com slash community. If for five bucks a month, you can become part of our tribe. You get access to our supportive community, our amazing mods, uh, moderators, fixing to be certified coaches. We got a few certified coaches in there. I'm certified too. And we also run challenges in there. So at any level you have access to challenges. You also have access to me acting a fool in there on my pop-up live streams, the kids recipes. We just have a really good time in there and lots of questions answered. Yep. And instead of 3,500 people asking questions, there's typically 50 to 250 people in a live. And so we're able to answer questions, all of them in much more detail. So thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to share this video if you haven't already, because I promise you, you've got a friend or family member who will see this, that you shared this on, on Facebook or MeWe or Twitter, and they'll be like, what's this? They'll watch it and be like, oh, my God, I've got that. I wonder if this would help me. You just changed their life by oh, clicking a button. <clears throat> How cool is that? I hope you had a good laugh. Yes, I know you did. I sure did. All right, guys, we're out of here. See you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central if you're in the group. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Enjoy your cukes. <laughs>